Thank you so much, Juan. Thank you for joining us today for our Dallas ISD Rosemont Upper Community Meeting regarding renovations to the campus for Bond 2015. Um, if you would like to submit questions, please do so and you're watching us through Facebook. Please do so using the comment feature on Facebook. If you want to uh, ask questions during the meeting, you can feel free to do so by, if you're on the Zoom meeting, please click the reactions button at the bottom, and then you can raise your hand, or you can submit, and we will call upon you at the appropriate time, or you may submit um, your questions in the chat window. So with that, we will turn the meeting over to our wonderful principal, who will bring greetings. Have a great meeting. Thank you for joining us this evening. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our uh, update meeting. Uh, thank you guys for taking the time today to join this meeting, in which we will be providing, um, be provided with a review of the rendering. Uh, for those of you who have yet to see it, we'll also go over the results from our traffic study. And lastly, we'll hear the timeline uh, for how long this, this process will take. So once again, thank you and welcome. Good evening, everyone. My name is Ben Mackey. I am the trustee for District 7, uh, and one of the schools that I get the privilege of representing is Rosemont Upper Campus here, and excited to be here with you. Wanted to thank Principal Barker for all of the work that he has done and continue to do, and thank everyone in the community who has taken part in a long series of conversations starting years ago and going through uh, community meetings in early 2020 uh, and late 2019 to really get a lot of these design features discussed and then the architects who have taken them and run with them. So I'm excited to be here tonight, excited to, to see this project come to its fruition and, and move forward and looking forward to being here and continuing to work with this community to make sure Rosemont kiddos get a school that is befitting of the excellent education that they received. So I'll turn it over back to Dallas ISD. Thank you. We'll now hear from our design team. Um, take it over, Seth. Seth. My name is uh, Stevens. I'm with Tiberi Architects. I've been working on this project uh, since 2018, so it's been a little while. Um, as Ben and Marco kind of know, we've gone through several iterations of, of, of scope on this project, and uh, we're just uh, excited to show you the update of where we landed. And we're excited to get this uh, project underway in construction. So without further ado, I'll kind of go through these updated images and floor plans. This is just an aerial. You can see the uh, lower campus on the right, or excuse me, the upper campus on the right. The lower campus is the larger one on the left. Um, this project is uh, only about the upper campus. This is kind of an aerial image. You can see the current state of the upper campus here. There's some portables. Um, those are all intended to go away. Uh, just an item of note. Uh, there's some uh, townhomes kind of right across the street that are about 50 feet tall. Um, the tallest portion we have of the building is kind of going over in that area just to kind of keep with a similar scale. Everything else is a uh, one floor that we're adding. So the general uh, project scope is uh, renovating the existing building and adding about 40,000 square feet of additions, mainly fine arts additions. And the uh, intention is to get rid of the portables and give those some actual uh, uh, permanent fine arts spaces. As of right now, the portables are being used half as uh, some, some campus elementary um, grade classrooms and also as uh, art, theater, choir, all the fine arts are all in the portables, which really isn't an appropriate space for those. So um, that's a primary driver of, of the project. Um, there's some pretty heavy renovations in building two. I believe all these things are items we discussed in the last community, and I don't think there's anything that we really have um, reduced that we already agreed to be doing. Um, we're gonna renovate classrooms, new ceiling, light finishes, interior finishes. Uh, AC upgrades, um, the library is going to be upgraded and updated, cafeteria update, the old windows are going to be replaced. We're going to kind of restore the existing building um, back from when it was covered up with stucco and not all the windows infilled. Uh, we're going to put the old windows back, not the old windows, 
old, older looking windows that are kind of a historic style. Put those back, um, open the windows back up and um, do some uh, finishes on the existing building to kind of make it uh, look in a style that it originally was. So this is the kind of aerial image of the new new campus. We're going to reorient the uh, main entrance, kind of where the gym is now. That'll be the admin space, and then the fine arts wing is off to the left. There's an auditorium, and then a storm shelter gym, kind of in the back, in the, the courtyard with a amphitheater. The play spaces are all going to stay in the general area that they are now. Be a hard top uh, basketball court and playground. That sort of stuff will be up in the same corner. So the general site plan, uh, we're going to expand the parking on the south side. As far as classrooms go, there's more or less 24 regular classrooms, nine specialty classrooms, which includes stuff like uh, science lab, special ed, um, all the fine arts classrooms or specialty classrooms, any classroom that's not um, fully occupied by students as a homeroom is considered a specialty classroom. The auditorium is intended to seat 400 people, uh, kind of on the left here, and then the tornado shelter gym just above that is uh, size for the entire campus. Overall layout has not really changed much. I believe there were some additional requests like expanding the teacher lounge, renovating some restrooms, and those are things that we are we are doing. Second floor plan, these are uh, existing classrooms are being enlarged a little bit. The existing ones are a little, a little undersized. So um, the quantity of classrooms on the second floor are being reduced a little bit, but they'll be larger, um, more appropriate for uh, middle school. And then I'm just kind of going to go through the renderings, outside renderings of the new entrance, auditorium entrance. the uh, courtyard area with the amphitheater and learning garden. Cafeteria, uh, we're enclosing the connection between all these buildings. So previously you had to go outside to go to different buildings. There will be enclosed corridors between all those uh, once this project's completed. New admin reception area. This is gonna be inside the old gym, which was a little undersized. Image of the auditorium, 400 seats. The uh, old media center is going to be renovated, so it'll look something similar to this. The furniture is just a placeholder, so actual furniture may be a little different than this, but the overall space should look similar. This will be the gymnasium, tornado shelter, there's some bleachers. Cafeteria remodel. And that's about it for the renderings. I'm going to go on to the traffic management plan and the traffic study. Carl, if you want to talk about that for a little bit. Right. Um, the um, with the number of students not really increasing in in the in the uh, this school, um, what we've done, fortunately, with the uh, parking on Rainier, we can now expand that parking lot and have a lot of queuing of parents in that area, um, so that we can get some of the cars off the street. Uh, off of Montclair and, and Taft. So we, we've eliminated some of the queue that goes around the building. Um, I'd love to say it all goes away and we can hide it inside somewhere, but we can't. Um, but we can then divide up the, uh, the campus into different um, queuing areas, middle school on Taft, uh, fourth and fifth graders on Montclair and, and, and divide our fifth and sixth graders and fourth and fifth. We can divide it up and separate it such that the line is not as long um, so then we can get that queue off the streets as soon as possible. Um, like I said, I'd love to say we can hide it all on the campus, but we just can't. Um, I don't, you know, this is the best we can do. And we, we think it does improve the, uh, the queue of the uh, parking and the queue of around the campus by getting some of those cars off the street and into the larger parking lot. I'll turn it back over to you, Seth. 
Okay, and just an item of note, the auditorium is kind of in the southwest corner. The lower campus has a fairly large parking lot right across the street there. So if there was a larger event that deemed necessary to have more students or teachers there, they would have some overflow parking so they don't have people all over the place. So moving on to project schedule, uh, currently the project is bidding out to uh, contractors. Um, we're hoping to open those in the next couple of weeks. Um, once that is done, um, the building permitting with the city takes a little bit of time and then construction will actually start sometime this summer is the plan. Um, with about 16 months of construction that puts the construction project complete around winter of 2022. So we're still a little ways off from being done, but um, you should start seeing um, dirt being moved around and, and things happening in the next few months. We'll open it up to questions. Seth, if I can, if I can catch off for just one second, Jackie, I was gonna explain where we are in the zoning process. Um, a, a lot of you received a postcard uh, about this meeting so you could be here and talk with us. Um, we have a hearing at the City Planning Commission, not this Thursday as in two days ago from now, or the 18th, or tomorrow, not tomorrow, sorry, the 18th. Um, uh, once it goes to the Planning Commission, once they make a recommendation, I'll go to the City Council. We're looking at a hearing date at the City Council either the end of March or the first part of, uh, of April. Um, that uh, and once we get through the city council, that'll be the end of the public hearings on, on the zoning. And that goes into uh, what Seth mentioned, um, construction and getting the building permit also. So that's all I had, Jackie. Thank you. Great. Again, thank everyone for joining us today. If you're joining us on our Zoom call directly, please feel free to use the um, reactions button to raise your hand so we can go ahead and take you off mute. You can ask the questions directly or you can place your questions in the chat room. If you're joining us on Facebook, please um, submit any questions you have in the comments on, as comments on the Facebook page, and we will be addressing those. We do have a question um, about, a couple of questions coming through already. Um, if you could go over the plans again for the student drop-off and pickup, we did have a question about whether there's any consideration about having a new drop-off or pickup area. Um, as, I, as I mentioned, um, this area, um, Seth, if you could go down by Rainier Street, the, uh, that allows some extra queue that's not in there right now. And, and I think between that and dividing the grade levels into different queuing locations, um, that gives a little more queue off the streets. Like I say, uh, I can't get everyone off the streets, but it does free up a little more traffic uh, to get some of the off the street and, and move this, the the queue through the line a little faster. So uh, that extra parking down below did provide us a lot of space off, off the street to get some cars off the street. Thank you so much. Now with respect to the sidewalks, um, I am curious why the sea of concrete on Taft isn't being reduced to add some green space along Taft. Additionally, I think it would be a good idea to widen the sidewalks along Mont Montclair. As it stands now, the students gather in the grassy areas while they wait for pickup would be great to see some edits um, with this respect. Address that? Yeah, I can talk real quick. So a lot of the sidewalks here um, are being replaced and uh, along with that replacement, they're gonna get a little wider than they currently are. I think the standard is uh, five or six feet. Right now, I think a lot of them are three foot, which is a little narrower. Um, the one on the north side, um, there's a lot of trees up there along Taft, I believe the question was. Um, I don't know that there's a whole lot of opportunity to reduce the amount of sidewalk up there because there's a retaining wall up there and the school is still going to use that as a drop-off area. And so if we don't give them a hard space to, to pick up and drop off on it, it'll just turn to a mud pit. So um, that is a good, good question though. Thank you for that response. Now we have a question about the pandemic. With the pandemic still in place, where will you place the classes next fall when construction is in full force? And I guess added to that, what are the normal precautions that we have in place for construct for schools under construction? 
um, during this pandemic. Someone from the district want to answer that? I can, I can do it if they don't want to. So I'll, I'll take my best stab at it. So in general, the, um, there will be hard barriers between construction areas and areas being renovated because it is an active school. Um, construction workers during the daytime won't be working. They'll be working after hours, weekends, that sort of thing. So there won't be any really intermingling of students and staff. Um, the contractors also have a, a fairly lengthy safety protocol list with regards to uh, the COVID-19 situation. Um, so any of the contractors that are bidding on it will be required to um, maintain that protocol. Wonderful. Um, if there is there any, we have another question here. Is uh, will the school school still will students still be in the school and will school still be held in the building during construction? Yes. I think when that with that respect, as well as the previous question that we had, from what I understand, there's going to be a partnership between the construction crew as well as administration where they work hand in hand together in planning on where construction will be versus where. Principal Barker will, will have classes being held and there will be a schedule of sorts that will be worked out. So there will be communication between construction administration as well as with the community and as well. Yeah, just to elaborate on that, I think there's something like 17 phases on this project. And so uh, the renovations will happen in little bites, uh, not as a takeover of the whole school. Thing. So they'll get a little piece, turn it back over, get a little piece, turn it back over. Okay, great. And also, um, not any of the disruptive, truly disruptive construction is scheduled when kids are not in campus, or students are not on campus, is that correct? So any, dem any demo work, anything that will be highly disruptive will be scheduled around the school schedule, is that correct? Yeah, in-ground stuff, utility work, that sort of stuff is scheduled outside of school hours. Wonderful. So we do have a question, I believe this will go to, um, to Dallas. ISD staff on the academic side. Um, we have a parent who has a question. Is it confirmed that third grade will be at the lower campus next year? Yes, it is. Third grade will be at lower uh, the upcoming school year. And as we move on into the next month, we'll begin to send home communication as to what that process is going to look like. Wonderful. We have a question around, around the trees. The trees currently along Taft are... Can just for a moment also? Yes. Uh-huh. Go ahead. Um, Acting Chief of School Leadership, Orlando Reddick. And something I want to share just to elaborate with uh, Principal Barker's comments about third grade is we are also going to look to, and uh, led by the Executive Director, Ren Sotelo, and the Deputy Chief of Staff, uh, Rashonda Clayton Brown, an opportunity to also learn uh, from our community, uh, not just about this question, but about the, you know, the vision for. Uh, for the campus itself, for upper and lower, and want to get you know Principal Barker in there and uh, community members. So look for some information that's going to come out so that we can sit and have a really good, robust dialogue about all the inner working parts that uh, Principal Barker is leading, uh, that Ms. Sotelo is helping to guide and be a thought partner through this work so that we can have further discussions around uh, the vision of where this the, the two schools are, are, are adjoined and how they may uh, operate as the community members see with this beautiful building that's coming online uh, for what that could all look like. So look forward to a time where we can sit and discuss and think about uh, what are we doing really well? What do we uh, need to keep? And what do we need to stop in regards to uh, this development around uh, the future that Principal Barker is leading? And so look for an opportunity that that, that, that can come through. And uh, this is going to be new for Principal Barker hearing this uh, coming from me at this point in time, but just know that this is our way for us to do some outreach that goes out into the community. So uh, looking to see um, and hear from our community members, uh, the exciting things that are happening uh, here at Upper and Lower. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and what an exciting time for this school and this community. Uh, we have a question about the trees along Taft. They said primarily um, Bradford Piers, and they were wondering if any consideration had been uh, taken into uh, replacing those with some hardwood trees. 
Uh, I can answer that. So in general, the city of Dallas has a very strict landscape ordinance. And um, while they may not be the best trees per se, they um, are fairly well established trees. And um, the, the city of Dallas kind of frowns upon us chopping down trees and replacing them just because they're kind of uh, older, older trees. Um, if if some of them happen to die along the way, you know, they, they could possibly be replaced as hardwoods, but uh, probably not during this project. Okay, great. Um, we have a question about the arts leadership. It's my understanding that the fine arts leadership played a part in advocating specifications for our art spaces. Can you address any changes that were made to the dance room specifically since the last meeting? In particular, square footage and storage. And will I be, or the art leadership team, be a, able to be a part uh, in the decision making, such as the location of mirrors and actually interior design? So, just to uh, I guess respond to that question in a broad way, uh, so we did meet with all the uh, uh, Dallas ISD um, directors of fine arts, all the different programs. Um, it's Rachel Hara, Tim, uh, Tim, and all those people. And I can't recall exactly what the square footage is or the exact layout of what these spaces were, but we had several meetings with uh, that group of people and we um, worked out where the mirrors are and where the best places for all those things are, um, sound panels, um, storage, all that sort of stuff. There's a lot of give and take, but um, it was with a lot of input from the fine arts directors of Dallas ISD. I hope that answers the question about that, but about those in um, about the placement. Um, we have a question, and this may go to uh, Mr. Barker or to Mr. Riddick. Um, how will how are the elementary school kids being separated from the junior high kids? Sure. Um, well, the, Principal Barker, take that, and then I'll add any insight after. Great. Yeah. So on the layout that you guys are actually able to see at this moment. Um, uh, number fives, that's the area where you will have our four, oh, four and fives, the fourth and the fifth grades as depicted on the layout. Um, then we have a continuation. If you're looking at the, what's that? The east, or in this case, the west side, you see num those numbers. Uh, we'll continue with those fifth grade classrooms. And then secondary will be upstairs. So the second floor will be space um, accessible only for uh, or junior high students. So they will be completely separated. And that's typically the model that we have where there's a separation that begins to separate the, the younger and the older students uh, through a floor plan. If it were a single story, it would be, operate similarly. If it was multi-story, you're able to really uh, move kids in a way that um, Principal Barker has just explained out. Now we have a question about construction phasing. Um, can you elaborate a little bit more on that and um, elaborate on how it will affect existing ongoing classes? And also in, a, in combination with that, um, there was a question about what would the after hours and weekend construction times be? So I think I sort of outlined the, the phasing to some degree. Uh, there'll be hard barriers. There's a whole bunch of different phases within the building that'll happen and be turned over one at a time. Um, as far as the after hours work, I believe City of Dallas has a seven to seven ordinance. So no noisy construction can happen after those hours. If it's something inside the building, they could work um, later than that. But as far as stuff that as a neighbor, you may hear it, it will be kind of isolated within the seven to seven limit. Okay, great. Now we do have a couple of questions. Bradford pear trees coming up, and Mr. Crowley has already provided the answer. Um, they were asking about, of course, replacing those with hardwood trees. But uh, from Mr. Crowley, the live oak trees will be planted in the area from the existing Bradford pears and Mary Cliff. So I'm hoping that um, will help answer those particular questions. Once again, once again, we're here. So we want clarity on the hours for the weekend construction. We said seven to seven. Would that apply to um, weekends as well? Possibly, but I can't say that for sure. Uh, the city of Dallas allows you to work from seven to seven on, on Saturday. No work is allowed on Sundays. Okay. 
unless it's emergency repairs or something of that nature. Wonderful. So as a reminder, we do we did have a number of people who did join us a little late, both on Facebook and in the in our Zoom meeting. So Seth, if you mind just kind of going back over the presentation to make sure everyone's up to speed. Um, we still have a few minutes, and once again, if you have a question, please submit it. If you're on the Zoom meeting live, please submit it using the chat window. And if you're joining us on Facebook, please add it in the comments section. We'll be glad to answer any questions that you may have regarding this project. Okay, so when you're ready. Okay, so just kind of starting over from the top. Uh, we've been working on this project since 2018, and we've had multiple meetings with uh, the principal, the community, and everybody along the way. Uh, and there's been a, many iterations of this project, um, and this is basically the uh, result of all those meetings and kind of where we are before we get started in construction. This is the uh, existing site. Uh, the upper campus is on the right, lower campus on the left. There's no work going on in this project related to the lower campus. There may be future work, but not as part of this. Uh, the upper campus on the right here, um, you can see that they added some townhomes across the way. They're about 50 feet tall, fairly large. The only taller order that we have is the auditorium, which is a one floor space, but there is a fly loft, but even the fly loft will be um, a lower height than these buildings. Everything else is uh, single floor. Um, so the the most of the existing building is being renovated. Um, we're adding about forty thousand square feet of additions, primarily fine arts additions, uh, which includes art choir, dance, instrumental music, the four hundred seat auditorium, uh, black box theater, the gym, which is also a tornado shelter, and the uh, new entrance is being retrofitted from what was the old small gym. And we're also enclosing all of the uh, connector corridors between the buildings where the students used to have or currently do have to walk outside <coughs> to get between the three existing buildings out there. Uh, building renovation wise, we've got most of the classrooms being renovated with new ceiling finishes, lights, um, uh, AC replacements and upgrades. The library is being renovated into a uh, more upgraded uh, media center, cafeteria is being renovated, the windows that are existing um, are being replaced with uh, a historical style window and the old infilled parts are being opened back up. So it'll have a much more historic feel than it does currently with all the windows covered up. Um, bunch of electrical upgrades, restroom renovations, site improvements, re-roofing, and the portables are all planning to go away as well. This is just an aerial image on the right, uh, Montclair. And the new entrance is kind of going to be on the south where the old gym was. And then the fine arts wing off to the left and the auditorium and then the gymnasium storm shelter on the north side of that. The playgrounds, uh, flat work and that sort of thing will remain in the existing location, but there will be new flat work, new playground equipment and that sort of thing back there. As far as the classrooms go, there'll be 24 regular classrooms, nine specialty classrooms. Uh, when we consider a specialty classroom, just a room that isn't a home room, like an art room, a science lab, that sort of things, um, special ed. Uh, as far as the floor plans go, this is all very similar to what we uh, outlined at the last meeting. A few little walls may have moved here and there um, based on some meetings we had with the district, but largely it's, uh, it's unchanged from the last uh, community meeting that we had. Um, just kind of followed up the plan for being fourth or eighth is the fourth and fifth grade would kind of be in this uh, this campus, uh, this area kind of on the north side. And then the upper grades would be in the older portion of the building with the uh, eldest being on the second floor. Just a rendering of the new entrance area. Auditorium. Um, 
amphitheater area. It's a learning garden. Cafeteria addition and expansion. New uh, reception and security vestibule at the front. This is taking place in the old uh, gymnasium. Uh, 400 seat auditorium. This is kind of a vision of what the uh, old library will turn into. Uh, gymnasium and also the tornado shelter. It does have some bleachers on one side. And that cafeteria renovation area. And that's most of the renderings. Carl, if you're on, I don't know if you want to go through the traffic management plan again. Um, with the um, addition of the parking along Rainier, we can take some of the cars off of the uh, queuing um, off the off the surrounding streets and place them in the parking lot that release some of that and then by dividing up um, by grade levels um, to the different classes and dividing them into three different locations for the pickup that um, sort of shortens the length of the number of cars wrapping the school um, and, and hopefully will shorten the amount of time um, that uh, the cars will be in the area otherwise the traffic pattern remains pretty much the same just we get with the parking lot we can get some of the cars off of the street so thank you as carl mentioned uh, we're actually reducing the capacity of this building a little bit um and as such the tornado shelter is sized for the entire capacity of the building to students and staff So as far as project schedule, where we are right now, we're in the bidding and permitting phase. The project actually bids out in a couple of weeks. Um, and then it takes several months for it to go through the city. Um, the zoning needs to be uh, approved, which I believe happens in a couple of weeks here. Once that's approved, then the city will actually start reviewing things. Um, but as such, the construction is probably gonna start sometime early summer and the projected completion is winter of 2022. Um, but having said all that, you'll probably see stuff starting to happen this summer, dirt moving around, fences going up. Um, that'll be going on for a little while, but uh, winter of 2022, we should be uh, having the contract get out of there. Okay, moving on to questions. We do have a few questions have come up. Um, for DISD, I understand this cannot be addressed in the zoning, but would it be great to see some of the compliance um, in the city's ordinance for trash pickup? Currently, the dumpsters are picked up as early as 4.30 a.m. Considering the noise and that it's a residential setting, how about coordinating the trash pickup to occur within um, the city code a little bit later in the, evening, in the day? And I'm I certainly want to thank the community for that question because uh, that is an early pickup time. And I understand, you know, the reversing and the sound of the truck and the dumping of the dumpster. So I have a question to our team, and I appreciate that. that I saw earlier, uh, and it is to address that particular question. Can't guarantee anything at this point in time, but once I get a response, I will get it back to uh, Principal Barker that he could share with the community around, is there a modification around that 4.30 a.m. pickup time? Uh, right now, uh, they're, they're telling me they can handle that, uh, but it does not give me a time. So it looks like we may be able to move off that 430 time, but I'll let Principal Barker know more uh, when I get a detail um, time that we're able to work with. Thank you so much, Mr. Riddick. I'm sure the community will really appreciate being woken up so early. Um, where will the, there was a question about where will the contractor be parking? Where will they be located and where will the staging for construction vehicles take place? Uh, that's a little bit of a complicated question, but in general, um, some of their stuff will be housed inside of their construction fence. Some of their uh, staging may be offsite in storage facilities. Um, the lower campus has a fairly large parking lot. Um, Marco and his group of people may 
allow them to use a portion of that for uh, parking construction vehicles, maybe in the corner or something. But that's all conversations that we need to work out with the school district and uh, and the contractor once they're actually on board. Um, but that is stuff that we, we do take seriously and, and trying to keep those out from people's houses and that sort of stuff. Okay. So a question about queuing for that parking and access. Does the queuing in the teacher's parking lot cause any access issues? Uh, well, the, the, the fortunate thing is, um, and, and I've been doing this for, for decades, um, usually the traffic in, in a school, uh, even in a high school, uh, the traffic is worse in the afternoon, obviously, not in the morning because everyone shows up in the afternoon at the same time, pretty much, and usually early. Um, but uh, it's usually over within 15 minutes after the uh, final bell and everyone leaves. And, and it doesn't sound like it's that quick, but I've been to high schools and it's that quick with a lot more kids. Um, the fortunate thing is, is th the queuing would be in the teacher's parking lot. I was mentioned in the question and the teachers don't leave in that first 15 minutes or so after the bell. So we, we haven't seen that as a problem in any of the schools where we are queuing in a teacher's parking lot. So I don't think that will be a problem in this case either. Great. So if you could elaborate on what work will be done um, when the kids are not, only when the kids are not in the building. Yeah, as far as that, I mean, there's, there's some significant scope in here, like um, renovating out a, a cafeteria takes some time and stuff like that's gonna have to happen, you know, over a long summer or, or something like that. Um, a lot of the stuff during the school year, um, renovating a couple classrooms at a time, that's sort of the things that will be done um, after hours and then turn back over to the district. Uh, the contractor will have hard barriers up with uh, hard doors and that sort of stuff so the kids can't accidentally walk into a construction area or anything like that. Um, we also have a question about the actual schedule. Um, the community is asking what might prevent a start time of this summer because it's so critical to get started this summer. I agree. Um, I think the most critical thing on this timeline right now is the zoning process. And that's kind of why it's been delayed out a little bit at this point, but we're hoping to get the zoning approved in the next couple of weeks. And then that'll allow everything to kind of follow through. Okay, as a follow-up question to that, is there anyone that our neighbors can do to help to get that, to move that process along? Well, I guess for the zoning, you can uh, contact the plan commissioner and the city council members to say you're in favor of the zoning, so it'll move forward. Um, otherwise, uh, uh, everybody keep their fingers crossed that we have good weather and we can uh, start construction on time and move on. Great. So another question, how can families and community members help? Okay, we already got that one. City permitting is slow down at, at the start of the construction. If you know a council member, they might be able to help. That's a suggestion um, on how the community can actually help. So the question comes, what exactly is being rezoned? Um, the, the school um, is, uh, Seth, you can correct me, close to 100 years old, if not older, the original school. Um, the city of Dallas until the late 80s did not require public schools to have zoning. Um, that's why you'll see a lot of these older schools uh, that haven't gone through major innovations have never been zoned. Uh, they don't have the zoning and, and the zoning is now required for public schools. The lower campus across the street when it was built needed to have zoning and it has zoning. So what we're zoning in this case is basically um, the old school the remaining school that'll be in place, and then we're required to do the zoning to basically do the addition. Um, uh, you can do minor, minor additions to schools without zoning, but uh, eventually pretty much all the schools in Dallas will have zoning on them. And the zoning for this school and most of the schools in Dallas is written exactly for this school. That plan that Seth showed you will be part of the ordinance and that's what we can build and no more. So, um, you know, going into it and this is what you see is, is what you get. Um, that plan, we can do minor little changes and stuff to it, but that's the way it's going to lay out. We do have a question here from Facebook. One of our Facebook um, um, partners says, this is a, does any of this or will this affect the number of students be, that will be able to attend the school? 
So I don't know who will speak to um, attendance and enrollment. Uh, Mr. Bark, Mr. Mr. Riddick, we have a question regarding the number of students that will be able to attend the school and put, and project an enrollment on the campuses. So we get projections every year, and I couldn't tell you what that projection looks like right now. And Mr. Barker or Mr. Taylor, if you have that number, you can share that. But every year we get a projection from a demographer who lets us know what um, what enrollment would look like in the school. So currently, right now the project is being built on what that number entails. And then we have a capacity number. And so then the enrollment number and the capacity of what the building can all actually offer when every student is sitting in the building, those numbers can be different. So you can, have, you can go actually above capacity in order to meet that need. And you have your enrollment number that can fall you know, well short of that. So I don't have those numbers. I can get those and get them to Mr. Barker so you can see you know, what the project entails. But when we're thinking about you know lower level classes, you're thinking about 22 to 24 kids in the class. When you're thinking about upper level classes, you're thinking about 24 to 26 in the class. Um, on on what could be average, those numbers typically are well below those. So if you can uh, think about what the square footage of the class is being built for, that uh, Seth Stevens and WRA have as a as a footprint for the square footage and how much seats, how much square footage a student occupies. That's what it starts to get built out for. And then we work through the capacity enrollment numbers. And so I can go to Mr. Barker and he can share that with the community. Raina, did you have something you wanted to add? Oh, I was, I was, if the, the question was regarding the capacity of um, the fourth through eighth grade, correct? Is that yes. I, for the make sure I understood the question. Um, so Mr. Barker, can you share um, what your average enrollment is right now for fourth through eighth grade? For eighth grade um, middle school, um, we have anywhere between 175 to 200 students. Uh, from for fourth uh, through eighth grade, um, if my number, my calculation are right, we're talking about um, 100, 180, 86 students in those grades. Okay. Thank Ms. you for clarifying. Mm -hmm. Your you gave eighth grade as a as a single number. And what was your eighth grade number? And then you gave a four through eight total. I'm sorry, my fourth, fourth and fifth. I'm sorry, one eighty six. Uh, okay. My middle school is about uh, the six through eight is anywhere from one seventy five to two hundred. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Okay, great. We do have a number of questions coming in. Um, the slide plan does still not still does not show. Um, the high retaining wall on the southwest corner. How do cars enter the parking lot near the corner? These are great questions coming in. Thank you, community. So there is a retaining wall on, on the southwest corner. Um, and I guess the question is how do you get out of the parking lot? The, the parking lot and the building actually step down as it goes down the site. So it minimizes building height to some degree. And it also allows us to um, collect drainage and do what we call bioswale on the back end of this building. So there's going to be two little retaining walls. The existing one will be kind of short, and then there'll be a little bit taller one, but there'll be a bioswale with a bunch of trees in it that basically delays any drainage runoff and kind of filters it um, as part of the city of Dallas requirements. But uh, those retaining walls that are there now will have to be reworked pretty significantly. Okay. We do have another question from, coming in from Facebook. Um, it says, if the school is 100 years old, why not tear it down and build a new one? I can jump in on that one. I know Mr. Barger provides some context as well. Um, so I know at one point, a few years ago, the school was scheduled to be torn down and build a new one. And I know there was a large community uh, desire that came in up, up all the way to the board level. And this was prior to my time on the board. That, that asked to renovate the building instead of tear it down and build a new one. And so therefore the bond from 2015 was reallocated in that support of the community to do a renovation. And so that's why we moved forward with the renovation plans. And you know, again, done a great job and I'm thankful for all those staff and uh, Dallas ISD 
uh, architects who've helped us get us to this point to do a renovation that, that speaks to the old historical aspects of the building. Okay, wonderful. Um, we do have a number of, of, of our community members and families who are asking how they can show their support for this project. And again, um, the comments coming back and the response coming back is to please let your elected officials know that you support and you're anxious to see the um, renovations to your school moving forward. So that'd be your council member and your council members appointees to the zoning commission. You can find that information, of course, on the city of Dallas website. So please just let them know. We're excited the fact that you're, that you're excited about this project. And we just want to make sure that everyone knows that, yes, we do value your voice input. Um, so is there anything controversial that you see? It seems like this is just a regular process for the city of Dallas. Is that correct, Carl? Um, yes, uh, um, we we're, we're working on 20 or 30 schools right now, and, and this one is is not really any different than the other. Um, as Seth mentioned, this um, this school was um, a snake bit by the pandemic, as we all were. Um, much of this design was done pre-pandemic, and then with the pandemic, has really slowed down the process um, to to get this through zoning, but. But otherwise, um, there's really no controversy. The staff is is fine with it. They're recommending. Okay, call you. We broke it. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. So as we we have another question coming in, as we're going to wrap up the meet, as we're coming to the close, with our meeting will end around seven o'clock. So, um, what is something you're really proud about about proud of about this design? Is there really an innovative idea you implemented in the design that makes it special? At so, it seems like it's time for you and the design team to start bragging about how beautiful this campus is going to showcase some features of this campus. Yeah, so I think I mean there's a lot of really exciting spaces that are going to happen in this building. I think uh, with the community's input and the district's input and everybody we've we've managed to put together a building and an addition onto a, a very old building that seems appropriate, um, especially being built on it a hundred years later. Um, the reuse of a lot of the existing building is kind of nice um, in, in its own manner for sustainability purposes, but this is also a, a, a CHIPS design building, which is a green building initiative that uh, the district uh, is a part of. And um, so there are a bunch of things like the learning garden, which is kind of a neat fixture for the, for the, the school, which they do have one currently. Um, this may be a little, a little more significant what they have now, but the old one will have to kind of go. Um, some rainwater um, collection, that sort of stuff. Um, and this would be a really nice outdoor amphitheater. Um, I, think, uh, I think it'll get a lot of use. It's got a nice covered area. So if they want to use it for anything they can use it. And it's also a nice secured space. So in beyond the COVID times, you know, there's also a lot of outside spaces seem to be more important than they once were. Um, so having a nice secure outside area that the kids can use is, is super valuable. So I can go on, but I'll, I'll leave it at that for now. <laughs> Aside from the grassy knoll in the middle of the space, what other playground areas will exist? I said that you said you're on mute. Yeah, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have a real good image of it, but basically there's a, a hard court area with basketball courts up on the north side, um, kind of a chessboard, and then some playground equipment that'll be uh, in a little bit of a shadow of the the gymnasium so we get some shade back there and that's in addition to the the big grass area great so uh, we want to thank everyone for joining us today and encourage you again to stay up to date on this and other dallas isd bond 2015 projects by uh, visiting our website at www.dallasisd.org forward slash bond 2015 again that's dallasisd.org forward slash bond, B-O-N-D, 2015. And if, with that, if we want to go ahead and begin closing, uh, any additional remarks, Carl or Seth, you may have before we turn it back over to um, Trustee Mackey and Mr. Riddick and Mr. Barker for any closing remarks. No, I'm good. No, go ahead. Okay. 
Well, I just want to say thank you to the team that's been working on this. Thank you to Principal Barker, the entire Rosemont community for taking part in this. This has been a long time coming, and so I'm really excited to, to be at this stage and see this vision start to come to a reality. So thank you all so much for being here. Again, feel free to reach out to me directly if you have additional questions about anything. Uh, I know Mr. Barker is open to that as well. But again, thank you all for taking the time to be advocates for your school, to be out here today and see the exciting future that Rosemont's got ahead of it. Likewise, I just want to share, you know, thank you to the community, uh, to Principal Barker, to Trustee Mackey, who, um, uh, who have led uh, and spearheaded this opportunity for the community to get an amazing space for learning. Uh, it's going to be dynamic. Uh, you can see the previous one lasted 100 years. So you can see the footprint that you're going to about to put in this community as a legacy for a very long time. And appreciate the vision that's, that's taken place to make this work come to fruition so that we can have something very special for kids. Again, I just want to thank you guys for taking the opportunity, the time to, to show up today and, and participate in uh, in this session. Thank you to all the parents, to the community members, all the stakeholders involved uh, in bringing this uh, project to 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 this day so far. And um, I'm hopeful that uh, we can get started this summer so that our kiddos can can have what they deserve. So thank you guys very much. Wonderful. And once again, thanking everyone for joining us today, both on the Zoom call and on um, Facebook Live. Of course, feel free to share the Facebook uh, Live video uh, with your family and friends so other people know the great things happening in the Rosemont community. A copy and a video of this presentation and of this meeting will also be uploaded tomorrow on our website again. And that website is dallasisd.org forward slash bond, that's B-O-N-D, 2015, dallasisd.org forward slash bond 2015. On behalf of Dallas ISD, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Good night.